Hey guys, Drewski here, and today we're going to be talking about sticks. Well, joysticks in particular, and hands-on throttle and stick, or head tracking. Do you really need that for games like Arma 3? If you're a pilot in Arma in your clan and you want to get better, do you really need it? You know, how much does it actually help you? Could you be a better pilot even if you were a professional pilot with keyboard and mouse? Well, we're going to be talking about that today. I have flown uh, a few ops now using my Verpal setup. This is the setup I got for DCS a few months ago. And so I got to fly a lot in DCS. I probably have now maybe 200 hours under this HOTAS system, but also I've probably got maybe 10 or 20 hours in Arma 3 in particular. And I've learned a lot of things flying in Arma 3, uh, especially in this last op that I recorded, which I recorded the entire thing, um, but I didn't record my own voice. So that was gonna be a whole video for you guys, but I decided, hey, let's make something of it because I didn't record my own voice. Let's talk about uh, something that will help you guys out if, if you're shopping for a new HOTAS, this this uh, non-corona, finally 2021. Hopefully corona's gone and we can get back to normal and maybe graphics cards will go back down. I don't know what's gonna happen. So in Arma 3, do you need a HOTAS? And how high end of a HOTAS should you get? In Arma 3, flight is a little bit simplified. There is the advanced flight model for helicopters, but in this case, let's talk about fixed wing first. Fixed wing is where you're flying a plane like the A-10, which is what you're most likely going to be flying if you're a pilot. You're gonna be flying air to ground aircraft or maybe like infantry transport for halo jumps and stuff like that. In reality, um, in milsim situations, you have mostly 90% of the, the people, the players in the game are gonna be infantry on the ground and maybe 10% are going to be air assets, helicopters, and, you know, support helicopters, transport helicopters, CAS helicopters, and then you might get a fixed wing fighter or, or CAS aircraft in there. Um, and, and that's the thing. You don't really fly fixed wing that much in Arma 3. You might fly it at the moment, but really question how often you're in an A-10 seat in this game, especially in a kind of like a multiplayer Milsim clan sort of, uh, uh, play style. It's not that often. It's really not that often. And, and, and also, we're never really flying the air-to-air -air jets because in reality, there's really no use to flying air-to-air -air jets in Arma 3. So it's the A-10. Let's just say, should you get a HOTAS for flying an A-10 or a Frogfoot or any ground strike aircraft in Arma 3? In my opinion, I don't know. I, I, I really... I've been flying a long time without HOTAS. Even when I had a HOTAS for games like Elite Dangerous and maybe a little bit of DCS, I would try it out in Armor 3, but I just never got the hang of it. And it took me a long time to finally, as in the last few sessions, finally get used to using a uh, a HOTAS system with Arma 3. And that's just because, well, I've flown so much in DCS with my current HOTAS that I'm finally kind of used to the way it feels and the way it should, you know, react to um, controlling aircraft. And then bringing that into Arma 3, I was like, oh, this actually feels a lot more comfy than I remember. And it's just because I've gotten more experience with this joystick because I've been flying more in DCS. But the thing is, is that I can go back into old A10 videos and just by the way that the footage looks, I can tell if I was using track IR or if I was using um, a joystick. And in like, let's say the last one, uh, which was like a A10 winter Chinaris op in the middle of the night. It was an awesome video, by the way, highly suggest it. It actually has my voice on like the footage you see in the background today. Uh, I don't think I used a joystick for that video. I think I flew that entire op um, keyboard and mouse. And I would consider myself a pretty good A-10 pilot in this game. I, I, I think I'm I think I'm pretty good. I, I, I wouldn't say I'm the best or like the best of the best, but I've flown just, I've, I've got a lot of experience in flying the Armor 3 Milsim Ops and A-10s and stuff, and I love doing gun runs and stuff. And I've got a lot of videos to, to showcase that. And I decided at this point to not use my HOTAS just because it was probably in a closet and I didn't want to bring it out. But I still was able to get the job done. I still was able to take off and land the thing. Arma's flight model is just a little simplistic when it comes to fixed wing aircraft. And you're not really having to worry about over -ging very much in Arma 3 or you're not really having to worry about tearing the wings off because it is impossible to. So there's no reason to have a large, uh, let's say, surface area of controls like you get with a joystick. For example, with a you know, WASD, if you click W, 
then you're instantly leaning one like as much as you can as fast as you can forwards so that's like throwing the joystick all the way forwards but with a joystick you can slightly put it forwards or slightly more put it put, like lean it forwards so you have a lot more space you have a lot more surface area to make little fine adjustments and those fine adjustments are needed in something like dcs to make sure that you don't tear your wings off or, or you don't over g when you're in a, a a turn fight with another fighter jet but in arma there's just not really many circumstances like that so for arma in particular fixed wing aircraft I would say not unless you have a lot of money and you really, really want to get a joystick set up, should you get a joystick set up if you're planning to use it primarily for uh, Arma 3 fixed wing fighter jets and A-10s and all that sort of stuff. I think you can do mostly everything just with mouse and keyboard. Now, helicopters in Arma 3 are slightly different. Um, I got to fly a helicopter this op because uh, the troops on the ground needed transport and so I decided, hey, I might as well, uh, you know, just, just go hop in a Black Hawk and do some transport stuff. And I got to practice for the first time ever in a live operation, probably not the best idea with people in the back of the helicopter, um, got to practice with the Verpal setup and got to set some controls and I was good to go. I was flying. And with the Black Hawk, it was different because when you're using a helicopter it's much more often you're landing and taking off and that's stuff that requires a lot of surface area like we were talking about earlier a lot of more fine adjustments over a larger area which means you know i have a whole throttle to throw back and forth for finer collective adjustments i have rudder pedals which i can move left and right for exactly zero to 100 any one of those numbers along the way i can adjust my rudder pedal to to just get that exactly right angle of turn or my, you know, joystick, for example. I can just balance in the air super easily with that stick, you know what I mean? Whew. It's entirely different with a helicopter. I think if you're a helicopter pilot in Arma 3, um, a, a good joystick setup can definitely benefit you, especially when it comes to rudder pedals. Uh, I think rudder pedals were the most important thing I actually used today with uh, the with the Arma 3 setup helicopter uh, the joystick and throttle they helped a lot and I think that I wouldn't be as good of a pilot without them especially with the, some more training but rudder pedals were stupidly important I actually didn't really realize how important they were until I started to do landings in urban areas where I wanted to make sure that my tail was in the exact perfect spot so it wouldn't strike any of the buildings behind me coming in for landings and angling the aircraft slightly to the right so I could see out the windows on the right side because I, I, I just I, I love doing that, it's really helpful. And I can definitely see how if you were to use this setup in, let's say, a little bird where you're trying to get really accurate gun runs and you're using a helicopter to do CAS and try to pinpoint your helicopter onto spots and fly really low in the mountains and stuff. For stuff that's more strenuous, for stuff that's more, um, I would say, closer to the ground, things like flying through canyons and a lot things that require a lot more finer adjustments that is where a hotas starts to really shine now i still think that you can probably be just as good of a pilot overall if you practice enough with a keyboard and mouse again arma 3 even the helicopters are not realistic they are not 100 percent you don't have uh, ground effect you don't have uh just turbulence you don't have anything really affecting you in arma 3 flight and that's why Mouse and keyboard, I still think, is easily doable. There's probably a guy out there that could just smash anybody with mouse and keyboard just because he's practiced more and more and more. And, and, and in the end, it's not about the product, it's about you and how much you train. Because I've definitely been in that position before where I plugged in one of my joysticks and, and, and throttle setups at the time and I hadn't practiced it and I said, in my mind, I almost told myself, I will be better I will be a better pilot because I have this setup now. And so I got into Arma 3 and I crashed. And I got into Arma 3 again and I crashed. And I restarted, crashed, restarted, crashed. And I realized that, no, I'm not a good pilot. This is going to take a lot of practice learning to move my hands in this certain way to get that muscle memory down, especially when in emergency situations like a helicopter auto rotation, for example, or engine loss in a plane, which doesn't happen in Arma 3. But you know what? Maybe Arma 4. Or maybe Armory Forger. Or maybe we shouldn't talk about how that game was confirmed by a gutter. No, let's not talk about that. No matter what setup you have, it really just comes down to the practice, the training, the time you've put in, and that's what makes you a good pilot. 
but it gets different once we hop games. Let's hop into DCS, Digital Combat Simulator, and talk about that game. Uh, this game is exactly what it says. It is a digital combat simulator. It's entirely different from Arma 3. It's not better, it's not worse, it's got less features in some places and more features in others, but it likes to focus in the aircraft department in particular. And the aerodynamics are much more advanced in this game. If you pull too hard in one direction, your wings come off. Um, and with WASD, you can't tell the game to pull softer in a direction. You just click W and the nose th throws down 100% power. Like, that's just what it does. Or you click S and the pilot yanks the stick all the way back. That's how it's going to be if you try to fly in DCS with uh, <laughs> this, sort of, this sort of stuff. It's not exactly perfect. Now, the DCS devs like to say that you can fly without a joystick, and you can. I've actually trained some of my friends to fly and shoot and kill things in this game without a joystick, but it's definitely not as enjoyable. That's one main thing. It's not, it's not that you're better at the game with a joystick. It's just not as enjoyable to have all these keys bound to your keyboard, but it's also just not as reasonable because a lot of the times if you're in a, th a thick of it dogfight, and you're yanking back too hard on the stick because you left one finger on the numpad two button or, or just something like that, then you're dead. But with a joystick, you actually physically can feel the, sh the extra strain you're having to pull back on just to get those extra little AOA points, degrees into that turn. And so you can really feel when you're stressing the aircraft and it's usually a slower transition because you have a huge area to move your hand around with a joystick. I've also flown helicopters in DCS a little bit at a friend's place, thanks JT. And oh my God, okay, you definitely, uh, yeah, you need to, yeah, 100%. You cannot do that with mouse and keyboard. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. You need rudder pedals, you need you need a VR, you need one of those like 40 cockpits that the crazy dudes make. They're like worth $30,000. Have you seen those things? Holy crap. And I know that might make sense. I mean, DCS is a more complicated game and Arma is a simpler game, but I know a lot of you guys are getting into Arma or have been playing Arma for a while or, and maybe want to get into the more flight side of it. And you don't know exactly uh, which, you know, throttle or hotas to get or how much you should spend and that sort of thing. And so I do still get a lot of questions that surround this topic. If you're interested in getting into Arma 3 uh, flight sort of stuff, I would recommend a you know mid 200 range uh, sort of joystick setup, something like the SciTech X52 or the X55, or I think there's the X56 now actually, which is better than both of those that I just mentioned. Um, I think AV has the X56 now, um, but those are pretty good options. Uh, now you're not gonna get anything crazy for 250, but it's something that will get you started. It's a great beginner set of joysticks right there that I just mentioned, and I, I, I think they're all decent. Decent. I think they, that you can be a professional uh, heli pilot with those joysticks, as well as they come not with rudder pedals, but they do come with a twist axis on the joystick itself. So you can turn the joystick left and right, and it will actually act as a rudder pedal, which, trust me, until you've tried it, you will understand how hard it is to use rudder pedals to get your brain to use your feet to control something in the game it's very hard to train that muscle memory until you are seriously flying every single day, all the time. You'll raise your feet up, you'll sit them in your chair, or you'll put them up on your desk, and then you'll realize when you're landing a plane, oh god, my feet need to be on the floor right now for my rudder pedals. <laughs> but one product I definitely recommend for both games, no matter what you're doing, fixed wing, uh, rotary wing, DCS, Arma 3, no matter what you're doing in these games, and I'm not sponsored by them or anything, I, I actually, I actually hate that there's only one product here, but it does work decently. It's Track IR. Track IR is very needed. You need to be able to have awareness. You need to be able to kind of lean in your seat in the helicopter to look behind you, make sure everybody's in, uh, or, or look at your side benches or something, or check out your rear rotor, see if it's still there. Sometimes it's not. Track IR is super important, especially when you're getting into that more uh, landing in, in small areas, sort of helicopter stuff, or maybe you're doing plane dog fights and you need to make sure that somebody's not on your butt. Uh, track IR is very nice for that. And Track IR might seem a little bit confusing 
confusing to a person that hasn't seen it before, but it's a really simple, just clip on your head sort of thing. You look at the screen, and if you look slightly, like, like let's say 10 degrees to the right, then your head in game will move 80 degrees to the right. And so it's an accelerated movement sort of control that you can have entirely independent of your hands and feet. So your hands and feet can be four different controllers on four different control surfaces, like the joystick, the throttle, your left pedal, your right pedal, and then your head can be your fifth. It's just another way to speak to the game, control the game, and, and feel what's going on. I really do enjoy having a head tracker. I think it's super nice. It's, it's almost like a middle way jump to virtual reality in a way, because you can look around with your head. And once you practice with it, it becomes second nature so, so quick. So definitely recommend track IR. First off, I think you should get that like first, first thing. Um, and then secondly, you should consider getting the joysticks. And then maybe if you hop into DCS, for example, get some higher end joysticks, especially because um, that game kind of requires them, especially if you get into the planes with a lot of uh, many, many buttons. But the FC3, the, the simplified uh, cockpits are not bad with the either even mouse and keyboard or, uh, or or a simple joystick with not too many buttons on it. They're not that bad. Well, hopefully guys, this video helped you figure out if you are wanting to get a joystick or a, a HOTAS set up for one of those sort of flight sim games, whether you should get it or not, I hope that helps because um, in the end, it's all about your training with that product. It's not really about the product so much, but it definitely makes sense to save your money for better products along the way. Um, definitely get your head tracking first before you get into joysticks if you're trying to work on a budget because uh, even keyboard and mouse with, with a head tracking software, is multitudes better than just keyboard and mouse alone. Um, joystick, you really have to get used to, but your hands, they got muscle memory. And if you're controlling aircraft and you're really good at it with your mouse and keyboard, you're not gonna mess up that muscle memory by putting on a head tracker. And that's the main thing. You can still train your hands to be good at piloting while your head has a new program for itself. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching the video. I will see you in the next one.